Hi guys, and welcome to Vegan Booty Talks. I have a guest with me today. She is a plant-based enthusiast and the founder of Good Cravings. She was born in Ukraine and developed a passion for health and wellness by coming across raw food lifestyle that lead her to a lot of food experimentation and uh, experimenting and reading on that subject. In 2012, she certified as a holistic health coach through IANA and work with individuals on improving their health and lifestyle. She self-published the book, Raw Food for Body, Mind and Spirit, Six-Week Program for Beginners. Welcome to the show, Ina Ararhi. Hi, Yay. how are you? <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. And it's like, your intros are so like, um, you know, nicely phrased. And I'm like, who is she talking about? Like, oh, <laughs> these nice things. But thank you. I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk with you again. This is awesome. I know your message is very important and dear to my heart. So it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you on and you did quite a bit a lot. That's why your intro was so long. So before we get started with some of the questions I have ready for you, can you tell our listeners, just in case they still don't get, what are you doing for a living and where you are right now? Sure. So there are quite a few things that I'm doing because, hey, multi-passionate person, right? So, but in my 20s, I explored with a lot of things, including the lifestyle. And now in my mid-30s, I'm kind of uh, uh, benefiting from all those planted seeds in various aspects of my life. But uh, many people don't know that I also uh, do a little bit of coding. I learned how to code a few years back. And I work for the software company where I test programs for defects. Uh, but that's not the very, the most exciting part of my life, even though I hope no colleagues see me. Uh, the most, excit most exciting part of my life, it was my health and wellness journey that started, oh my God, over 10 years ago, I think. I was like two or three years already living in the United States. And that's how I... Um, got on this journey, but it literally changed everything. It helped me to launch my business six years ago, which is Good Cravings. So we're a private uh, manufacturer of whole food, vegan protein bars here in Houston, Texas. And we're a 100% uh, women-owned business. And it's my myself and my mother that is in charge of operations and productions of the products. And over the last six years, organically, we grew uh, by word of mouth. And we have a very, very developed, devoted clientele in the niche in the market to where we make boutique items, fresh protein bars, and ship them to, directly to a consumer, bypassing all the third parties, uh, warehouses, big stores. We don't need to basically kiss up to anybody. All we care about is the happiness and satisfaction of our customers and, of course, the quality of the product itself. Because, as you know, it's a very saturated niche in the market, too. There's so many protein bars out there. I literally go and, from curiosity, look at the bar aisles at different grocery stores where I mm -hmm. shop. And I literally see that now it's not just a section, it's the whole aisle of bars out there. And I can understand how much competition we have to deal with, even though I never approach my business that way. But I also feel so grateful that amongst all these you know, brands and product on the market, we have so many dedicated people that's been buying from us for years and willing to invest with us and in us by choosing our product every day, despite the uh, the shelf store, uh, the store shelves. Yes, exactly. And even though you have a big competition, your bars is definitely special. And guys, you should check them out because your bars is raw, is vegan, is made by hands. And honestly, it has the cleanest ingredients that I as a nutritionist saw in the bars. 
Let me tell you guys, when I first time tried Good Craving Bar, I was shocked how good they are by seeing the ingredients. I didn't even believe, kind of. So that's why I reached out to owner and I was like, oh, okay, she's Ukrainian. She probably don't lie because you're from Ukraine. I know we can like <laughs> see each other. So because, you know, uh, a lot of, of also a big problem uh, in America, a lot of uh, standards for packaging and for ingredient list is missing out a lot of things they actually put in there but your product is super clean because you created basically by your hands or your mother hands and it tastes so great so I was like like really inspired to share that and I was shocked how good you create them by just using a simple basic ingredients so let's back up a little bit and uh, ask uh, I want to ask you about how you actually become vegan because your bars is also vegan. So before you create your company, I'm sure you switch to the plant-based diet, right? Yes. And you know what? It's all really by accident. Um, I did not decide to become vegan or convert into a plant-based. I didn't even know what those things are. You know, growing up in the Ukraine, especially back in our time, I'm sure time have changed there too, but it wasn't really a trendy thing. You, we didn't really talk about vegan things. I actually met one guy. I was, uh, I think, maybe I was 16. No, I was probably 19. I went to this camp uh, with a few friends, uh, but they were in high school. Uh, so they're younger than myself. I just knew a girl there. And uh, one guy there was, I think he was vegetarian, even not vegan. His family raised him vegetarian. And we were not us, but his uh, teammates we're literally like making fun of him and like testing him out and trying to put the piece of meat in, in his like bowl, you know, when we were cooking at the fire at the fire at night because it was the odd thing, like how the person would not eat meat, you know, in the Ukraine, it's just a, a big deal back then. So it wasn't really in my mindset. Um, at some point, I think after second or third year living in the US, I came to this phase in my life where I felt very tired and fatigued at all times. And that ultimately made me feel also uninspired because I love to be active and I like to do things in life and go places and be active. But because I was physically tired, I couldn't do none of that. And that made me very depressed. I didn't really go to a doctor because I really didn't feel I have an issue, like a particular issue to complain about. Now I understand that there's like a adrenal fatigue or mental fatigue and physical fatigue. It's a thing. But back then I thought that I have really no issue to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, but also deep down, I knew that there's something is off inside of me and I have, it's my responsibility to find and fix it. So I was sleeping long, I was taking naps, I was drinking coffee, I, and you know, I was considering myself healthy, I wasn't into fast food in any way, uh, I was exercising on and off, so I couldn't figure out what's going on, yeah. but um, yeah, that set me on a journey to understand what is missing inside of me, um, and that led to experience with raw food, which I really did not adapt as a diet to, let's say, lose weight, but mostly a diet to experiment with. And that's another whole story because it's not like I went on Google and say, hey, I'm tired, diet, diet for tired people. Uh, a little backup story is that year prior that and what was happening with me, I was working with a lady whose husband went on a mono raw food diet. And so at some point he was mid his mid thirties and she said that he started to feel ache in his body, just not himself, not uh, you know, vibrant as before. And he started to eat mono raw food diet. That means first of all, raw food, nothing is cooked. Mono mm -hmm. means one thing at a time. So he wasn't allowed or he wasn't supposed to mix things at one setting. Like if he eats watermelon, just watermelon. Mm -hmm. If it's raw almonds, just raw almonds, like two hours later. So just one thing. 
And I haven't seen it. I haven't actually met him, but I heard that that, that was his, he was doing. And I was like, so I was like, it's like my mind went just like crazy, right? What's going on? Yeah, I had so many questions. On one hand, it was very interesting and intriguing. On the other hand, I was very judgmental. I was like, first of all, it's men. You know, usually thing is a woman stuff, right? It's like women try to lose weight and diet, but here is the man doing such odd thing in his mid thirties. And I thought, I, I mean, I pondered around it, and, but I didn't tell her what I thought. I just thought it was weird, but I left it alone. But somehow a year later, when I was going through my fatigue, this thing of raw food just popped in my head. You know, it just sprouted at the right time. And I'm like, okay, let me Google what this raw food is all about. But I'm thinking it's just watermelons, right? One thing at a time, which I had to discover that I was wrong. It's just one of the approaches. You Mm -hmm. can go mono if you want. And some people doing it temporarily, like, you know, fruit island. They're eating just mangoes for a week, right? That was also trendy at some point. But I've discovered... Uh, cookbooks recipe books on raw food and I was like well it's raw how you're going to create any recipes out of it and of course the um the menu and in and the content was so uh interesting because it had lasagna it has desserts it had pies it had not just salads right and I'm Mm -hmm. like well lasagna it's a very complex meal to make I don't even know if I can make it traditionally cooked let alone if it's yeah it's it's hard meals and it's hard recipes so but that was enough to catch my attention for me to order a couple of books and those books were so humble that had no pictures they were very thin I mean back then raw food just barely started and I was like okay and I didn't have no blender no dehydrator no food processor nothing but I don't know what happened to me. Something lit up inside of me. It was just so interesting to me. How the hell I'm going to be eating without cooking for, I, then I decided to go for three weeks. I'm like, I'm going to eat it two, three weeks. See how I feel. And the amazing thing happened is that my curiosity, I guess my passion uh, just gave me that boost of energy to experiment with all these recipes. And I started to find that through simple ingredients, you can actually create delicious recipes. I mean, all these simple things that I was creating, and again, no food processor, no dehydrator, nothing fancy just yet. I was blown away with. I'm like, this is delicious. This is tasty. I don't need to struggle. I actually enjoy this food. And I started to feel better. And I don't know what it was, whether it was a placebo effect just because I started something new, whether indeed I started to get that oxygen and minerals because oxygen is the water in food that's not Mm -hmm. evaporated when you're cooking. So it contains oxygen, H2O, the -hmm. molecular of oxygen. So... uh, of course getting that alkalinity inside of my body as well and so everything started to improve and on top of it as I was eating that way I started to read about it because I was like okay well there's another layer to this information which is education and when I was reading so basically theory and eating which is doing which is your practical part the two just came together as a great marriage and I was just sold to this idea. So, Mm -hmm. and I think that's where sometimes people fail. They either read a lot about something they want to do or try and they read and educate, but never do or vice versa. They do without understanding what they're doing. And sometimes they can harm themselves. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, raw food by default is vegan lifestyle right because you're not really eating animal products you're not eating any dairy so without even consciously choosing it it really kind of became a part of my lifestyle my diet and by doing this and reading about this then i understood the uh, effects on the planet right effects on your own health And then it came the animal industry and how the animals are raised, so on and so forth. So it just became a very organic, very natural, eye-opening moment for me. So that's kind of how it happened. Uh, To say, though, that I am no longer 100% vegan, because I think we all strive to be that back in the day. 
They're mm-hmm. everything or nothing. If you're 99%, you felt guilty, which is not a good way to approach things because that guilt is a very low frequency emotion. And that's the last thing you want to have in your life. You have to be happy. So you have to find the balance that, the balance that works for you. But I had, to, if I talk to other people, I always say, at least do the whole food. I mean, the mm-hmm. foundation for any food is whole food diet, something that's real. And then decide for yourself in which shape and form you pursue that. And of course, I advocate for as raw as possible. Not everything, but you know, salad or greens or seeds or something, it's always going to be good for you. Tomatoes, cucumbers, those things are easy. It doesn't need to be a raw lasagna necessarily, right? We don't need to go that route to incorporate raw foods. But yeah, whole raw plant-based sources as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. As a nutritionist, I am absolutely agree with you. You don't need to go vegan. You don't need to go uh, raw. You can just add a more plants and vegetables, real plants and vegetables uncooked into your diet, and you will already going to feel much better. But in the same time, I will be asking here as all the people are going to ask who are, you know, not vegan and never try it or maybe try it and fail. Have you ever felt like you want to eat meat or dairy after you switch to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It wasn't a switch that was overnight for me and forever. The urges were there. The cravings or emotional imbalances that make you crave something from your past, right? So it's it's not always even the physical crave, it's it's the emotional crave sometimes. Mm -hmm. So give yourself that permission not to be perfect whatever the journey you're going to embark on, even if you build your own business, you know how many times I wanted just to throw a towel and it's still going to be ongoing like this. And by the way, I talked to a business owner whose business makes 200 million a year and he had the same things that happened to him through his journey. So it's not like small scale, larger scale. We're all human beings and we all feel that way despite the results. Yes. So if, here is the thing, what I understood over the, the life, the last 12 years or so. If you have to convince yourself, really convince yourself to do something, you're probably not ready yet. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You should do it at the capacity that you're comfortable with. Let the thing that you're doing to lead the way. So I was sold on, let's say, even let's say put whole food approach, right? Just because I started to do it and I started to see the results and I started to feel a certain way. So I saw the proof. It was right there. I didn't need to read the books. I didn't need some doctor tell me because, you know, we're always going to be reluctant to someone else's opinion. But as we see it in our own evidence in our life, that's the proof right there. So do the bare minimum to where you're still comfortable with it, but still challenge yourself at the same time a bit, you know, because if you wake up and the whole day you have the distance because you are convincing yourself that cheese is bad for you, then you're probably better off to allow it to yourself than feeling guilty the whole day that you are struggling and battling and then you eat cheese and you feel guilty. And then the next day you're judging yourself and you're trying not to eat it again. And then you're, so you're just not emotionally there. So where are you emotionally right now? Just gauge yourself and start little, build it up. It took years for me to change my relationship with my diet and the body. And I'll tell you, it didn't take 10 years, but it took three years to change the whole perspective on how food works for me. I used to, I remember moments in my childhood when I would overeat very often. Mm -hmm. And I come actually from very poor childhood. So it's not like we had like you know, a lot of food all the time, but maybe because we didn't have enough food, when there were moments there were food, I couldn't hold myself. I would overeat. I loved sweets. We used to buy with my mom these bags of sweets and eat them at night because we were in a depressed phase in our lives, you know, but something had switched in my brain right here. It's not right here that 
I have not overeaten or had an urge to eat more than I need for years, in, for over a decade. I can literally swear that I have never had the urge again. But it's not because I am trying to, you know, convince myself. It's just that part of me, it's the inner knowing and feeling of my body. But it took initially two, three years just to change that. And you really, food changes you from inside out. So it's good to eat and to learn because this way you're teaching your body from inside, literal on the cellular level, level, uh, level. So not just convincing through your mind, right? Because the heart has to be sold as well, just as your brain. Absolutely. Yes, I, I am absolutely agree on that. Everything what's happening in your mind is that happening in your body. Everything starts from your head and finish in there. So wherever you do, of course, you have to uh, think and change your perspective on that and never restrict yourself. A lot of people thinking about the plant-based lifestyle or raw lifestyle or even healthy lifestyle is a style of restriction. I cannot have this or I cannot have that. And then you are not going to be happy because you are restrict yourself, right? So for all my clients and for anyone who listen, what she's saying is just like an amazing approach of better lifestyle. You cannot be perfect. And all the foods on this planet, they are created for different reasons. And some of them are not as healthier than the others, but there's no such a thing as a bad or good style of eating. It's just wherever works for you. And of course, we all can get better. Everyone, even I, like, right, even you, we, we always can get better. And I think that's your amazing approach and that which you experienced over the last 10 to 12 years. This is why you create this company, because even the name of your company is kind of like attached to the thing we talk about, right? Good cravings. So as soon as you exactly. change your lifestyle, your cravings are changed. And then from my personal experience, um, I am compete, right? I'm a bodybuilder. So sometimes being on the restrict diet for a show, I miss some sweets or treats that I can have, even like a healthy style of treats that I restrict myself, but I do it because I have, you know, competition. I have a goal I wanted to achieve, a body shape. And then, for example, show passed and uh, on the post show reverse diet, I'm you know, thinking, oh, I want to have this. I was wanted so badly two weeks ago. And let's say it's a piece of cake and I eat that piece of cake and I just like surprise how much less pleasure I get from that as I was thinking. I'm like, right. is that's it? Oh no. Uh, I was thinking I'm going to be so much happier. I was thinking it's going to taste so much better. Because my sweets, my taste bites, all in my body change. So that connection to that craving about that cake, it was from my mind. It was my emotional connection, not that such a, as my mind. physical connection. Oh, we lost something. One second. I'm going to do this. So, yeah. So that connection I had to that cake, it was uh, my more like emotional connection than physical right. connection. And then I love the name of your company. And then I want to kind of jump back to ask you, like, so how the history leads to opening your company. Uh, you already explained us that you switched to a raw and then, you know, accidentally plant-based diet. So when the idea of actually creating the bars and why specifically protein bars came to your mind? Yeah, I feel like... You know, when I moved to the United States, I was 21. So I barely knew the world and, you know, myself as a person in it. Uh, so, you know, I was in a journey of discovering myself as an individual as I was going through my life and, you know, doing the things that I was doing. And I feel like that switch to raw foods and discovering something so beautiful and so unique in my perspective, because again, I want to emphasize that for me, it was a big experiment. And then it became just really interesting to experiment with it. I wasn't going to diet, so to speak. And that's why I think I kept it going because I was approaching it in a different way. I wasn't approaching it in a way that I would restrict myself. And now nothing, 
outside of the spectrum of like, oh my God, like I can get the same vegetables and fruits, but no cook, do not cook them and make something different with them. So, but anyhow, that was my first, I think, love affair, my first passion, my love outside of work and just, you know, daily commitments of sustaining myself, basically, right? So it's the first time I felt very passionate about a topic. And obviously, you know, sometimes you get passionate about something and just kind of wears out. You're like, oh, I really like to ski. And then you ski a few times. And I'm like, yeah, all right, that was fun. You know, you move on to something else. But I couldn't really stop thinking about it. And I was every day, three minutes from work and from, you know, daily dues, I was thinking about it. Like the next recipe, the next book I'll read, or maybe how to order the blender whatever. So I was like, okay, well, how can I take it to the next level? Like, how can I actually make it my work? Maybe, right? Uh, I'm I'm young, I'm getting things out here. And that's how I came across the Institute of Integrative Nutrition that many people know nowadays. It was like the, the big thing online for anybody who are into health and wellness. And it's like every other person I meet who is in the health industry know or have been through the school. But it's a basically one year online school for those who want to be a health coach, not necessarily a nutritionist that requires a full education, like four or five years, but it's just something quicker, which is still a certification that allows you to work with people and just help them be their an accountability partner to better their lifestyle. And I'm like, great, that's doable. You know, I can work and do this online. Plus it's gonna expose me to other information and hopefully gonna give me the skills to pursue this passion full time. And that's what I did. I onboarded on the school. I did one year of school. I graduated and I started to look for the clients. I actually got a few women I worked with. And when I was working with them, I realized that I'm very actually limited in um, you know, pursuing this work further because you have to really work on building your clientele. That requires a lot of time, right? But if you're working full time, you can't really make a switch. Uh, then it becomes difficult because you can only see a few women, right? But then how are you going to build the clientele? I'm like, what else can I do that reaches bigger audience? But this, well, for me, I don't really have startup ideas. I don't really have a startup for this innovative uh, invention, you know, something small and humble. And so one time I was at a store with my friend and we went to this, this snack aisle and it was actually a lot of, uh, there was some raw food companies that started to emerge to the market. And we saw this, a couple of raw food bars back then it was just a couple. Now you can find a ton of brands. And this friend told me, Hey, you know, Hey, raw food bar, you know, like, because, uh, she knew I'm doing raw foods. She's like, why don't you create your own bar? I'm like, well, Obviously, there are already people doing it. So why would I would do the same thing? She said, so what? Like, what does it mean? If it's just one or two brands are in the market, doesn't mean that there is no place for more. And then again, it's just like with the raw food. You know, I thought, ah, crazy idea. Probably not. You still hear me, Aurora? Yes, yes. Okay, good. But that planted the seed. And I like the good challenge. So... I thought about it, I thought about it, and that idea was just swirling in my head. I'm like, ah, oh, why not? Let's give it a try. And uh, I started to, you know, we were already well, already doing recipes, and we actually had a really great potluck gatherings on a monthly basis in Cincinnati. That's the place I used to live and started my raw food mm-hmm. uh, in. And uh, I created a good circle of friends there, and we were already doing all kinds of recipes. So bars weren't the most difficult thing because it's just nuts and fruits put together in a food processor, right? So I just had to, to tweak some recipes to add like lemon zest, orange zest, berries, and f- Fairly fast, I kind of whipped up these four flavors. And okay, well, what to do next? I'm a young person. I, I really don't know business. I don't really have others. I don't really even have any money. What do I do? Mm-hmm. So I literally, just like any other person, got the Ziploc bags, printed a little sticker on the paper. A, a friend gave me an idea of a logo with a squirrel because squirrel used to be my nickname in college. And squirrel was a great uh, representation of the movement because you use a lot of nuts, right? In the raw food recipes, plus Mm -hmm. the bars that were made of nuts and fruits. So I felt like it's a good representation of my personality plus the idea. 
and uh, I got somebody to draw the logo and there it started. And uh, very soon, um, of course, nobody knows me. I'm not going door to door selling the bars, right? Okay, you have, you have this, what do you do now? Um, uh, my friends organized this health event um, and you know, where people set up the booths, or tables out of the building and everybody have different like health businesses or like side hustle, we're trying to promote it. So I was invited to one of those and I came with my bars, I put some samples and we had no traffic really that day. Like there was no people, it was just us vendors for friends really talking to each other. But there was this one person and she had a table as well. Her brother owned a small gym in some a certain area of, of, of the town and she was a health fanatic and they had a little fridge inside of their gym where they were carrying kombucha and some health products for their uh, gym members. Mm -hmm. So she came, she tested the bars, she tasted the bars and she loved them. And like the raw food was aligning with her. And she's like, you know what? I want to offer to our members. And that was my first sale there. I was, you know, I don't know, Britain. I don't even remember how many say 20 bars right and selling it like I don't know two dollars or something like this or maybe less and I was making them huge you know like probably bar and a half like really generously making a big portion and literally zesting by hand the fresh orange the fresh lemon which is actually quite prices you know on the bigger scale it's almost impossible right yeah so but I was doing all this. and I was happy I, I saw the $40 check let's say that she like paid for $20 and I felt like I have a real business now you know and I was like what if it's going to be 10 places like this that's going to be $400 you know I never counted my work the effort that goes into it, right? I was just literally looking at the ingredients and just a little something on top and I was happy. I was very naive, but I was just passionate, right? And so that was it, that was first place. And I really gave it a good start um, or you know, a lot of effort when I moved to Houston, which happens you know, uh, maybe a year or two years after kind of first draft of good cravings as a business. Mm -hmm. And here I had an opportunity, um, I had time uh, to actually just focus on good cravings. And I just started to go to different farmers markets. I started to do different events. I worked on you know, creating my website. I was really doing it all, taking pictures, doing the social media, like everything. And then I just literally, I was sleep deprived. I was almost making marks to, towards night and I was married at the time. So I know my husband will come from work. I tried to make dinner for him and, you know, listen to his day, share my stuff and he would go to bed and I would go make the bars. And it got to a point where it was, I, I saw that, you know, it's catching up, but at the same time, I was just totally fatigued and mm -hmm. I had I knew that I have to do something and my parents I actually immigrated my parents uh 2012 or 13 and uh, they came with me to Houston and I'm like hey I think this is a great opportunity for all of us I mean they're immigrants they need a job and you know it's always good when you work for somebody you know like your daughter <laughs> yeah <of laughs> because course. it's a really better better environment and I know that they're hardworking people. I'm like, hey, I need your help. You have to make the product because I'm great at marketing and sales and talking with people. Uh, so I'm going to do what I'm good at, maybe social media, and you can do the uh, manufacturing part. And my mom up till now still works with me. My dad, unfortunately, left the country three years ago, but my mom still does all of the bars that you guys eat uh she literally perfected she, i call her my little machine because she's like a machine almost like a human machine she just knows the recipes to the t and flawlessly executes them to the point where if i try to make the same recipe it doesn't come out in with my hands the same way in the same flavor like it, it's in her hands it's just to the same i mean to that point like wow. same everything and her is more delicious. It's just, it's just amazing. Wow. Because she make it with love. That's also, you can feel when you eat your bars. <laughs> yeah. And she, my mom is really takes it like any other mom. Um, anything she does, she does it to the point of excellence. She takes pride in what she does. Even if it's just, you know, keeping her house clean, you know, Ukrainian traditional mom, it's like, she takes pride in her thing. So it needs to be, 
she is a good perfectionist in that sense, right? Nice. Uh, so sometimes I teach her how to go with the flow and that's how we complement each other. I'm the visionary, I'm the flow girl, I'm the tree hugger. My mom is like, okay, practical, very practical. If I don't see it, I don't believe it kind of, you know? So that's how we kind of, you know, work together as a team. Yes. I mean, it's amazing to have a family business and I'm happy that you guys work together and create an amazing product, but I'm sure it wasn't always easy. And you kind of mentioned some ups and downs in your business, but just by sharing this inspiring story of starting from scratch and believing what you do and be passionate about what you do and actually being right now on the, on the, on the amazing scale of your bars is almost everywhere like everyone is know them even though you're a small company can you please give an, uh, some type of uh, you know uh, adv- advice to someone who maybe want to pursue same career maybe not of creating the bars but they mean want to do what they love uh, what they can do or how they can actually achieve their dreams sure so Well, first of all, thank you. I really appreciate your warm feedback and kind words that certainly fuels our day-to-day work, you know, and I have mentioned before that I wanted to throw the towel, as they say, many, many times before. And you know what? Every single time that I was in that situation or feeling that way, literally the universe will drop something. Either the big order will come or maybe a store will contact us or something happens very big and positive in the business sense, that would be like a clue that, hey, no, you have to do a bit more. You still have to keep walking. It is literally, I, I'm, I'm just like you. I do believe in neuroscience. I do believe like you can call it law of attraction, but I think it's outdated. It's more like how we literally create the biology through our neurons and thinking and contemplating because anytime we contemplate something we send out energy right and the more we do it the more we rehearse it the more it materializes in our life so this is no different and uh yeah so first of all the clues were there to keep going uh like it, and, and up till now sometimes i look you know person willing to spend 51 or 52 dollars with the ship and to get one box of bars that's quite expensive and I never never not once de- not appreciated such an investment but I understand that the only reason these people do it since we're not blasting ads it's because they know the product they can say so much about good cravings bar but it's it's for anybody who doesn't know the product is just another bar and anybody yeah. everybody claims bar is the best it's the best texture is the best flavor right can you still hear me yeah yeah yeah. connections okay but it's really you have to really trust that first purchase like you really have to like swallow and buy that first box to really understand what you were what you're dealing with because i think through tasting the bar you can literally, literally understand the difference. My words mean nothing. Yeah. And we focus on very basics, good texture, good flavor, because, hey, at the end of the day, that's what people want. We want healthy, but we don't want to struggle eating it. We want to enjoy our things. But we, and you know, in coming from Ukraine, it's a blessing because we know fresh food tastes better. Mm-hmm. Anything that's made fresh tastes better and you can actually you just have to give a little effort and tweak the recipe to make it tasty you don't forego your flavor or enjoyment for the sake of health and that's my thing I also cannot tolerate when I buy a trial of ours and the texture is pure rubber pure tire it's like okay if I would take this bar and say it's my product and take it to a farmer's market to give samples, pe- people would spit at me. I'm sorry for the joke. People would be spitting at me or cussing at me because, you know, at the store, the human element is taken out. Here's the product you buy or you don't buy it, right? And we're just forced to buy what's out there. You know, we don't, people don't face us. Those people don't face us. It's hard to find an owner of the company through the internet. And so I'm like, how dare they are to charge 250 without even giving the damn about the texture products. They shouldn't be selling this. They should 
spend a little bit more time perfecting this texture so it would be at least tolerable, right? And so, but that's where our weakness becomes our leverage because I stopped hiding that we're small. I stopped shying away that we're small. I turned it into our advantage. I'm like, yeah, we're, we're not in stores, but hey, I also don't need to be, first of all, making really cheap products so everybody makes their commissions before it reaches the store shelf. Yeah. And I don't, you don't need to buy a bar that's been on a shelf for nine months because that's one thing we couldn't overcome. We don't use preservatives and we don't use sodium as a preservative. So our bar doesn't stay on a shelf for nine months. And that's just the store, a distributor warehouse, it would lay even longer. So you don't know when that product was made when you bought it, you know, and I say, we make it, we ship it to your, to your hands. If you appreciate that, I know that you are going to be a devoted cu customer and it's not for everyone. And I am very much aware of that. And I don't need to sell to everyone to find a compelling client that resonates with our product and to who we report, how we make the product. But this is my advice. Turn your, um, weaknesses into your advantages mm -hmm. if you really make your own products blast the social media from with behind the scenes how many companies post how they make their product like do you anything you buy at the store can you really go and see how they make it i would dare you you would not find anything because they don't make it most 99 of the product on the market because of the mass production is outsourced to the third party this is just a brand name. So you're buying a wrapper and a brand, but it's made elsewhere. And it has its own reasons too. I don't judge it. Let's say if we need to mass produce one day, we probably need to do it too, because I cannot you know, create a factory, right? We're a small, humble facility. But I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna show that we make it. I'm gonna show how we slice it, how we mix it, the ingredients that we use. And you can do the same. You're making macaroni. One of my friends does fresh pasta. She's literally shown how she puts the dough in the machine, how the machine processes into you know, noodle shaped. I mean, this is cute and interesting to see, right? Because I don't know, I never seen how pasta is, is made, but I can mm -hmm. see that she's doing it. So it's kind of selling without selling. You know, and that's what I do now. I don't even try to convince people to buy my product. I like other people to talk about my product, like you today. And you know, I, you have to know, guys, Aurora had to pay for her first box of product. Oh, you know, yeah. because sometimes people reaching out and like, hey, I have following, I can promote you, send me some product for free. I told Aurora, no, I'm going to give you a small discount, but you have to buy the product. You got to try it first. And only then, if you like it, we can talk about collaborations or working working together. So it wasn't that she's like receiving free product or received free product and felt obligated to reciprocate. Yeah, this is not and even if I do, I'll, I don't do this stuff. I get uh, received quite a bit of free products and I don't promote all of them because I don't like it because it's not good, right? So yeah, I am actually appreciate that I, I need to pay because I want to support you and I want to support small businesses like yours. And then I love what you said. I really want to point that guys by overcoming your weaknesses, you're actually becoming your stronger self. And this is something that is my, in my personal life, I have to experience. And it's not only about business, which is you gave us an example, right? About anything, any growth in your life, right? It's amazing what you said. I just want to point in there. And the other sad thing that you said is, of course, no matter what's happening, you, you don't have to give up. You have to keep going and believe in good. And this good, just like in your example, quite a bit often coming up even a small scale, but something good happened to your business. So you keep going, right? And then of course, believing in your dream. And then I will be absolutely happy to share guys that you can go ahead and then try the bars. I will leave all the information down below the website where you can buy them because they are not available on Amazon. They're not available in the stores, but you can buy them directly. And you can use my code to have a 10% discount so you can pay a little less for your first time purchase. And trust me, you're not going to regret it. You're going to love it. I think you also 
always mention if you don't like my bars that's what you're saying right Ina if you don't like my bars just reach out to me and I will return your money or I will send you another box or something so that's the privilege of being open being small company and tell the people the truth what's going on with the products and you know I would just add from those bars from the shells when I look at ingredients it's just crash my mind because they have a bunch of sugar canola oil palm oil sodium in there and a bunch of other stuff if they are not vegan oh my god it could have so much growth we don't even know but you know you can buy this like this protein bar in the store for 250 you may satisfy your cravings but you don't really know how this affects your body but sometimes after you eat something you can feel it so what that's what i felt when i ate your bar uh i don't remember what first flavor i tried but i would say it was good but not like made the best flavor because of, of course we all have a different taste bites right. so i was like oh it's good i like it but it's like it's not like my the best flavor ever but then i felt right. great because a lot of the time when I buy a protein bar, I don't feel good after I eat it. I like how it tastes, but then after I feel too full, sluggish, and I don't like that feeling. So when you eat raw protein bars, you're going to feel great. It's like almost you're eating a fresh apple. So yeah, definitely guys, try it out. Yeah. Um, Gluten is one of the big problems um, that also with like protein bars especially if it's animals you know product with whey and stuff uh, makes you bloated and discomfort uh, uncomfortable but i just wanted to add to your point that you're absolutely correct some people like you and i are blessed with good health that we barely feel like we can feel like okay i at least don't feel bloated or i just don't feel sluggish but there are some people and many clients of ours that don't have that um uh, privilege, unfortunately, they actually have a lot of sensitivities, food sens sensitivities. And even if they like the product or whatever, not even ours, their body would not lie. Like yeah. even sometimes there were products. So I have people, we have customers who literally eat our bars because their body digests them well, comparing to let's say maybe even same bar, maybe with similar ingredients. But there is something in there that still triggers their body sensitivity and they still react. So at this point, this is where the best line detector, right? It's the body itself. So I know that the bars have been tested through in that way, in that sense, where some people like, okay, for, like I said, for us, it's okay, fine. But for, our, for other, other people, they would just have a reaction right away. Yes. And so they're just forced to really Absolutely. be diligent about their choices. Mm -hmm. And yeah. another thing I want to, sorry, I'm talking a lot, but I wanted to say that advantage of this, uh, like to turn into your disadvantages into advantage. Also, I I am lacking some food science on, on information. Like I, at some point I wanted to be in big stores because that's the dream of many brands to be recognized nationally, to be on the stores because it's, a big thing to, to achieve, right? And then I realized that there are some hurdles like preservatives, uh, lesser things that need to be added for texture, right? Um, oils and whatnot. That all helps with the shelf stabilization. So the yeah. bars can be shelf stable because they're not refrigerated usually. And I'm like, I don't know how to work with that stuff. Like, I don't know how to work with less a thing. The only thing I had to understand how to work with is fiber because it need, you need to digest that protein somehow because it's, you know, isolation, right? And so, but less a thing- Can you say it again? Always, I'm sorry. So at some point- I'm Hold like, on. Hold on. I lost you. You was frozen. Yeah, I'm and here. Computer sound. So can you say it again about the shell life? So many ingredients like uh, lecithin and emulsifiers are added for shelf stability. So the bars can stay uh, shelf stable, as they say, and don't need to be refrigerated because stores have limited refrigeration space. But because I did not know how to work with those things, because they're really not food, right? What's lecithin? I don't buy lecithin and eat it for breakfast, right? <laughs> so because I did not know how to work with those things, naturally, our bars stayed very pure. And that helped at the end 
to have the clients that are devoted because their body reacts to those things. You see? Yes, exactly. So even if for you and I, it doesn't matter. We won't, won't probably notice it right away. For some people, they do notice it right away because yeah. their body reacts. So yeah, I know um, what you mean. Absolutely. I have a clients like that who cannot just eat bars. I mean, they think they cannot because what they tried from the store is just gross. So it's a fact their stomachs or allergies reactions. So that's why, again, I am loving to promote your product and I think it's amazing. And then you guys better try it out. We can talk about this for hours, but you should that's try true. it. <laughs> I recommend you a walnut chocolate flavor and raspberry. It's my favorite, but you guys yeah. choose your own. And I just really want to talk to you more and more, but we short on time. We have to move to uh, my last question that I ask everyone on this podcast. What are you going to do if it's going to be uh, the last day on this planet for you? Yes. So if I really sit down and get like quiet with myself and humble and see what I really like to do the most, I mean, I obviously would not have time to, to save the world or anything like this. Nothing epic. But I like nature nature makes me happy like being in nature i grew up with a lot of nature around me and you know i like moments of mindfulness and grat uh, and solitude so depends where i am i'm going to try to find the most beautiful nature place there and probably do a very simple day outside amongst the nature walking breathing sitting down, listening to the nature sounds and just absorbing all that. So that's really my, my simple, simple way of spending that day versus come up with plan extravaganza. And I'm probably going to certainly reach out to all the people uh, that are dear to me and say for the last time that I love them because sometimes we hold off and wait and don't call right until it's too late. But that's probably an appropriate time to just one more time to express your gratitude for those uh, who played a part in your life. So, yeah, of course. Thank you so much for sharing this. And I never know when I create this question that is going to be so uh, straight to point and uh, at this time was being so hard in Ukraine and having the yeah. war. So when I asked him, I was like, oh my God, it's actually a really hard question for you now because today, like, like no, no way we could, like, I no way I can think about that before. Like I yeah. think about that right now. So thank you for sharing this with us. And I also have a small game I play with all my guests. Uh, to know them a little better so we want to know a little more about you and your company because it's a part of you so i'm just gonna say at uh, two things it's like a rapid fire you should quickly choose one sounds good out of two okay coffee or tea tea black or purple black. i'm sorry black okay gym or outdoor Gym. Beach or mountains? Mountains. Juice or smoothie? Juice. Wine or water? Water. Chocolate or sweet cream? Chocolate. Kiss or hug? Kiss. Love or sex? Love. And the last one, protein bar or a snack bar? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with protein bar. Okay. Who knows? Nothing against the snack bars because we started with snack bars. And I know. Yeah. You still have them. Or no? I think you still have them. No, you don't have a snack bars anymore. Only protein bars. No, we, we have, we let go two seasonal flavors just recently. We kept like four staple ones, but yeah, th they're the one we started. And I forgot to tell you about the journey, but we shifted into protein at some point. And that's comprised, I mean, 95% of our sales comprise of protein bars, if not more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, I want to know what is your, um, you know, vision 
for the good cravings and for your career look like? Can you share us uh, what is the perspective of good cravings you think is coming up? And you can share also to the audience wherever you want to, you know, uh, ad advise them or wherever you want to tell them. Uh, it's just your last last that sentence, what you want to share. <laughs> like any message yeah any message. Mm -hmm. okay so I'm glad you're asking about perspective because that you have to know that your business goals and perspective can actually change with you because as you grow as a personality your business grows with you actually and I literally see the change of my goals when I was in mid-20s when I thought about this idea to where I'm now in my mid-30s that's totally different I matured as a person and I even see the business had matured and I want to make some changes based on my personal involvement. But I recently uh, got to, to know or involved in this movement called conscious capitalism. Mm -hmm. Conscious capitalism is the philosophy, it's not even a philosophy, it's a set of principle based on trust, a lot of trust that uh, educates business owners that you can not only focus on profits, but you should also focus on treating people well, people who are your clients or people who work directly for your company. Yeah. And I was at the showing of Beyond Zero movie, which I have to tell you, you have to share the link to the preview. It's an amazing movie of this carpet tile company whose owner decided to go green all of a sudden. And that was in 1990s when the green movement wasn't even a thing. And over 30 period of 30 years or more of time where even he passed away, but in his lifetime, they literally switched through a carbon negative carpet production. They, they reduced their electricity uh, um, uh, consumptions and waste in general. And now they're inspiring other businesses to go that route. Well, I'm thinking if the ca carpet company who are just focusing on profits and nothing else, realize that they're really, the planet is in danger and yeah. we have not a lot of time left. And if every single business owner, because business fulfills the needs of society, you see, it's not just about being an entrepreneur, we're fulfilling some type of a need that society needs. Business makes the world revolving right whether you're going to get a haircut or you're going to a grocery store because a grocery store is owned by someone too so i feel like if every business is going to do very little on their part to bring that not just to take care of their own people but also think of the planet collectively we can achieve a lot and so if in my mid-20s i want to be a name in big chain stores in my mid 30s i want to continue my humble business but converting it to more ethical practices i want to have an edible wrapper the wrapper that's not just compostable and this technology already exists you can literally eat your wrapper you don't need to throw it away in the garbage yeah so I, I i want my company to be as eco-friendly as and I want to spread that word to other businesses. And the other thing I shared with you uh, in one of our talks, I would love to have a protein by bar maker where you don't need to buy even from us anymore. It wouldn't be cool if you can get your own ingredients and have a small device like a toaster at home that can make you a bar. And that's just my wild visions. I don't have no sketches. I don't have no drawings, but I thought it would be cool to give you the power as a consumer to make your own bar on demand whenever you want with ingredients that suit you. So you don't need to go and depend on other makers. That's you know? amazing. Kind of like I love it. Yes, yes. I love it. I think vision. conscious capitalism, yes, is, is, the, is the something that I'm really um, inspired by. Yes, I mean, I inspired by that too. This is my passion to save this planet and to consume as less you know, nature as possible and save it for our future generation. And I mean, I think in some point, all people and all the world will get to that point because otherwise we're just going to destroy this beautiful planet 
to the end and no one is wants that and it's slow coming up that's why we are here that's why we have this talk and we have this podcast and you have this amazing company so it's a lot of people out there who are stand up or you know doing the things that are actually changing the world so i am really appreciate you spend your time today and i will be doing my best to support your ideas and you guys have to try the bars and you should support this business because it's really worth it and i want to say thank you so much again for coming up today and finding time to talk to me i wish you all the best and i hope to talk to you soon more absolutely and my final phrase yeah what i'm going to say and it's not really mine i think someone else tell, t- t- said that before be the change you want to see in the world simple simple everyday actions don't expect it from the government don't expect it from your neighbor be the change first yes little, little actions ripple effect is real so we can all collectively change something love it be the change let it be our last sentence and i love you i wish you guys who listen be as the change you can start now you can start today right absolutely thank you so much for having me this was a pleasure uh an honor to be here and i appreciate all the listeners as well for giving us their time of course and you are as well thank you so much uh, to you and to all the listeners bye bye guys